Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be broken dates, blown off, and stood up. Well, I've got a good email I'm going to go through with you because this particular guy made a date with a girl, definite day, time, place, to meet up two days in advance. He gets to the place where they're supposed to meet, texts her, she doesn't reply for an hour, and then basically tells him she's not coming. And so he kind of gives a play-by-play -play of what he did, what he went through to set up a date, and she blew him off. Because I think probably everybody watching this has had this experience where, especially if you're doing online dating and you don't really have a lot of rapport with the person. Because I know a lot of guys like to just text back and forth and then set the date without ever talking to the person, which... To me, that's a mistake because you really should use the phone and especially FaceTime or Skype video to pre-screen the person to make sure – because you don't want to waste your time. You certainly don't want to waste your money on somebody. You want to – when you're actually going out and spending time, which is you can't ever get back and money, you want to make sure you're spending it on people that are good candidates. You know, what's interesting is like when I was in the mortgage business, we, you know, we would do what was called a mortgage pre-qualification. We ran a lot. We had television ads. We had radio ads. We had billboards. We had yellow page ads running. And so like we would get like 100 phone calls on average, I should say, out of 100 phone calls, that would typically turn into four to maybe eight closed actual transactions where they did a loan or they bought a house and they did a loan with us, or maybe they sold a house or whatever it happened to be. So you're talking to a lot of people. And so like anybody that's doing online dating or prospecting in the real world, like I talk about approaching women, and I've used this example probably hundreds of times over the years, is that if you ask out 100 different women and you follow the things that I talk about and how to be a 3% man, what you're going to end up with and these are women that at least make eye contact with you and smile. That's if you're meeting them in, in the real world. You're typically going to get maybe 10 to 12 dates that you're going to actually go out on. And out of those 10 to 12 dates you go out on, you may sleep with about three to five of those women. So if you think about it, it's a, it's a lot of numbers. But at the end of the day, if you're looking for a girlfriend or a relationship or somebody that you really want to hang out with, those are just the numbers. And so the average person when they're single – or they're in a relationship where they're unhappy and they know they need to end it, but they don't. It's like they think about broken dates. They think about getting stood up. They think about all the people, all the women they got to talk to, that or all the dates they got to go out on that are just never going to go anywhere. And they're like, oh, just the thought of that just keeps. Or when they're un in an unhappy marriage and they're not having sex and the years are going by. Like I had a friend that didn't have sex with his girlfriend or I mean his wife for three, four fucking years before we finally left her. And it's like just the thought of being single and then having to go through the divorce and tell all your friends and family and tell all your customers, everybody that knows you, yeah, we got divorced. Why? What happened? And going through and explaining all that, is, it's not an exciting thing to think about. And so that's why the majority of people just stay in relationships that suck because the pain or the potential pain that they have to go through in order to meet somebody else and to dissolve that old relationship is so unattractive that they're like, ah, we'll just stay in it. And they talk themselves into it and they make themselves miserable. And they never eat healthy. They, you know, as they get older, they're just like, they don't give a fuck anymore. You know, I, I talked about this a couple times over the years. I had a friend who's a cardiologist up in Orlando and we were talking about people it's like so when people have had a heart attack and almost die and you're like you got to change your diet and you got to exercise like at what what is the inflection point what point do people are like okay just tell me what i need to do i'll diet i'll exercise whatever you want doc he said about 75 percent of the people that are 55 and under will change their diet and they'll exercise but 75 percent of the people that are 55 and older are like Fuck it. Just give me the pill. I don't care if not changing my diet or, you know, not exercising is going to shorten my life by 10 or 15 years. They just, they don't fucking care anymore. They have no will to live. To me, as a coach, as just a human being, it's trying to always be at my best. It's like, 
that's a fucking tragedy. It's like, why would you want to go through life with that kind of a fucking attitude? And so the point is, is that, you know, we want to get good at screening the people out that we're going to go on a date with. And I looked this and he did mostly everything right. I mean, you figure two days later, the girl's going to show up at least. He, but I look at things because I'm the eternal optimist. I don't look at it as a bad thing necessarily what happened because I've gotten stood up before. I've, I've gotten stood up several times. You you get to be my age, 49, almost 50. It's like I've been on enough dates in my life and met enough women that just fucking flaked for whatever reason. Even women that I've known are kind of new. It happens. So we're going to go through and talk about some ways that you can cut down on the the chances of that happening, some techniques and some strategies for that. And then obviously we'll go through his email. So I got a quote that I wrote and then we'll go through the dude's email. And if you haven't read 3% Man, you can go to my website, understandrelationships.com, read it for free and get started learning the basics. So you, the idea is to improve the quality of the people that you're dating and improve your dating experience so you can start meeting and dating the kind of if you're a guy the kind of women that you want because most of us are like we just want the search to be over we want to find somebody now we're tired of the broken dates we're tired of the dates that go nowhere we're tired of meeting people and the conversation goes nowhere or it seems promising and then that girl disappears because she got back together with her boyfriend or her ex or or she just fucking goes to you and you have no idea why i mean those things are going to encounter the one thing we got to consider is especially us guys because we're visual creatures is we get all caught up in how hot she looks and how good she looks and the fantasy of what we want her to be and we ignore the fact that there are plenty of hot girls out there that are just fucking assholes and they'll blow you off and they won't even care it won't bother them and in some cases they'll actually feel good about it because they feel like they're kind of sticking it to you because They've gotten dicked over enough times in their lives, maybe by their fathers or men they're pissed off that screwed them over. And, you know, it's kind of like the the people that drive in the left lane really fucking slow. And, and, you know, you're riding up on their bumper. People are zooming around them. Even though you got big signs to say slower traffic, keep right. It's the law with big exclamation points because they create unsafe conditions on the road because everybody's trying to pass them. And accidents happen trying to go around these fucking cunts that drive slow in the left lane and they know that what they're doing but their attitude is like you know they're just fucking giving the world the finger that's the only time they feel like they have power over other people in their life is when they're in the left lane and they won't move and they know everybody wants them to move and that's why they don't move so with that said let's go through this quote and we'll jump in this guy's email the quote says a person's true character and integrity is revealed by how they treat people who can do nothing for them and those they barely know. Honorable people tend to treat others like they want to be treated. Trashy and feral humans tend to treat other people like dirt. They go through life looking for ways to screw people over in ways they themselves got screwed over or taken advantage of. They are the type of people who are habitually late to appointments display flaky behavior, are time wasters, stand people up for dates, steal from them, and drive slow in the left lane and won't move. They go through life looking for ways to give the world the hairy middle finger. The reality is that you reap what you sow. You can't outrun karma. Don't take it personally when you encounter these trashy, feral humans. Instead, Feel sorry for them because the universe will manifest, match, and mirror all the bad things they do to others upon them tenfold. It's the way the universe works. Eventually, they're going to get exactly what's fucking coming to them. That, that person that screwed you over, that guy that stole your fucking client, that dude that ripped off your fucking girlfriend or your wife, they're going to get fucked over eventually ten times worse. It's going to happen eventually. So they're, they're going to get what, what's coming to them eventually. So don't take it personally. It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with that person's character. And the reality is the sooner you can find out if a woman is an undesirable dating candidate 
or a client is an undesirable prospect or a tire kicker or somebody that has no integrity or they're just simply somebody you, sh you shouldn't waste your time with or somebody that you thought could potentially be a good friend or maybe somebody that you thought was a good friend all these years and you find out they're dicking you over or talking bad about you behind your back, you need to delete those people from your life permanently because whatever you allow in your life you're telling the universe it's okay to send you more of that. And we all know people that every time you see them like, oh man, you're not going to fucking believe what happened to me. It's like every time you see them, they're like, oh God, guess what just happened? This person dicked me over. That client did this to me. Oh, this girl was dating. Ah. That's why I say no drama allowed. So with that said, let's go through this guy's email. He says, hey coach, longtime reader and viewer, first time writer. On flaky behavior, I asked a young lady out. She said yes. I asked when she was free. She said any time. I invited her to join me on a date, at a time, at a place, and to text or call if something comes up, but that otherwise I'd see her there. She said okay, with a happy face afterwards seems legit so the one thing i want to point out here is that you know because you if, if you met somebody online or you just kind of met them in passing if you have more rapport maybe it's somebody you know through mutual friends or you met them through work obviously if you have their address and then you're going to go pick her up at her house she knows you're coming over so if she wants to cancel the date she's going to text you if it's somebody that you just met on a dating app and you've only texted back and forth and never even talked on the phone because maybe you're trying to avoid it or you're just hoping to get a date if, the, if maybe you're new to my work or the last few dates haven't gone well and you're just hoping because the girl looks good in her picture, you're just hoping she'll show up and you figure I'll convince her to like me when we get together in person. Instead of looking at it from, I want to talk, you know, I'm, I never do that. When I'm doing online dating, I never just text back and forth and then meet somewhere. I did that years and years ago, especially when the dating apps started going to cell phones. And it's like the amount of dates that I went on where girls didn't look like their pictures or the conversation sucked. It was like, that was a huge fucking waste of time and money. So I definitely made it a point to talk on the phone because you got to think about it from this perspective. If the conversation is not easy and effortless on the phone, whether you met them in person or you met them on a dating app or it was a blind date, whatever, it's like there's no reason to fucking meet them in person. If it doesn't go well on the phone, it ain't going to go well in person. The idea is you don't want to waste your fucking time. So with that said is that he didn't say where he met her. But more than likely, he didn't have a lot of rapport because if he's just meeting her someplace and she has low interest and she just says yes to it and she's a feral human like I talked about in the quote, it's like she ain't going to fucking care if she stands you up. She ain't gonna fuck, And you're going to see by the way she responded and what she said to him. It's like she don't fucking care. She's just like it doesn't mean anything to dick her over. You know, the, so I look at it. I mean it's. It's a good thing that it happened this way because he spent zero dollars on her. He didn't have to go out on three or four dates to find out that she had no integrity. He knew before he even had a date with her. And there's some things that you can do to prevent a girl like this from flaking on you. However, the question is, yeah, she keeps the date and everything looks good, but if she's already got character flaws... I mean, how much time and emotional energy are you going to invest in this girl before you find out she has character flaws? So I look at it as like, yeah, the guy got stood up, but he knows not to waste any fucking time with her going forward. So he says, that was Thursday night. So he makes plans on Thursday night to meet on a Saturday evening. We're talking 48 hours ahead of time. It's like, it's not like it's a week or two in advance. It's, I mean, we're talking two fucking days. He says, I didn't text or call to confirm Saturday evening. I just showed up at the place. I mean, think about it. If you make plans with a good friend or somebody you know, it's like, you know, I'll make plans a week or two in advance. I put it on my calendar and it's like, I know they're going to be there. 
But people who don't have integrity, they don't give a fuck. It's nothing off their back. And that's just how they go through life. They go through life dicking people over. He says, I just showed up to place like I said I would and made myself comfortable. I had a drink, socialized with some folks. So the other thing is you want the way you want to look at it is that you're going out to have fun that evening. And if a, this girl that you've invited to join you, if she shows up and you have a good time, awesome. If she flakes or bounces or stands you up, you're still going out and having a good time. And if she stands you up, well, you're not going to go out with her again. You're not going to invite her on a date. There's no reason to. She saved your money. And on top of that, you went out and had a good time. I mean, if you can't go out by yourself and have a good time, you're really not going to be great company when you're with somebody else. So you got to get to a place in life where you enjoy your time alone, where you enjoy actually hanging out by yourself and you don't feel like you have to have another human being with you. If you look at the world and wherever you go, like everybody potentially could be a friend of yours or somebody that you'd like to get to know, you can meet people wherever you are. I mean, anybody that travels for a living or works and travels for a living, you're going to spend your time in restaurants. You probably spend your time hanging out in the hotel bar, grabbing a meal, having a drink or two or whatever. It's interesting. It's fun to talk to complete strangers and find out where they're from what they're up to, what they're doing there, what they're traveling for, where they're from, what, it, what it's like where they live. I enjoy things like that. And that helps your social skills. You want Because you never know who you're going to meet. Say you get stood up and you're in a nice place where there's lots of other people around. So what? You get stood up by the girl who's your date. I mean, there's times where something like that can happen. You could easily meet somebody else. So big fucking deal. It's all how you look at it. Like what Wayne, one of the things that Wayne Dyer used to say that I love. He said, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. You could look at this and say, oh, fuck, she didn't show up. She screwed him over. What did I do wrong? Or you'd say, well, I was going out to have drinks and some food. And if, the, if this girl showed up and she was cool, great. That's just, that's a bonus. And if she doesn't, I'm going to have fun anyways. Maybe I'll meet a, meet a really cool girl when I'm out. That's the kind of attitude you want to have. Easy come, easy go. Don't take shit personally. Remember, a date really is a compatibility test. It's like test driving a car. If the car doesn't even make it into the lot, well, you probably don't want to be driving it anyways. He says, about 20 minutes after she was to join me, I texted her that I got here and what I was wearing. I gave her a clothing description. About an hour later, she said, I'm not coming there. Sorry. <laughs> a fucking asshole. 48 hours earlier. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to it. I continue to enjoy myself. And after about two hours, I wrote back that I don't do flaky behavior. Told her to take care. She replied almost instantly, declaring she never said she'd be there. <laughs> like, yeah, he's got the fucking text where she said, okay. It's like she's just an asshole. And he called her out on her bullshit. And then she tries to turn around and say, it's not my fault. Now, why would a, why would a woman react that way? Because she's a fucking narcissist. Selfish, narcissistic. That's what, she, that's what that reveals. That's what a narcissist does. They try to turn it around and say, no, it's all your fucking fault. There's a lot of people that are fucked up and grow up in fucked up families. And they take no responsibility for anything. And on top of that, they try to blame it all on you like it's your fault. So you avoided getting involved with a narcissist. Ding. And you had a good time by yourself. Ding. And you spent no money on her. Ding. That's a win. I mean, because otherwise, what you could have done, you could have said maybe three or four hours ahead of time and say, hey, I'm kind of running late. I'm jammed up today. And say you're supposed to meet at 7 o'clock. Like, hey, can we meet at 7.30 instead? Does that work for you? And say, yeah, no problem, I'll be there. Or you give her a chance, oh, no, I can't make it. But say she'd have kept the date. Then you go out with her, everything seems good. Then how long does it take before you find out that she's a fucking narcissist? Three dates later? Four dates later? After you've slept with her? After you've been involved with her for a month? Here, I mean, it's like it costs you nothing. Zero dollars invested in her. You know right away, that's it. Phew, disqualified. I mean, it sucks that it happened. 
It would have been nice if she'd have shown up, but now you know. You've pre-qualified her right out of your life. She doesn't meet the minimum standards. He says, when we argue with women, we lose. So I stated that I invited her out, that she said okay, and had said that if something came up to let me know because her reply was so brief and super flimsy. I told her that we shouldn't continue talking and exited the conversation. How'd I do? I think you did fine, dude. It's, I mean, yeah, you could have pushed the, you know, I've done that before when I remember there was a, a bartender that I went out with. I just, I've thought about this when I was going through this. It's like, that's one of the reasons I chose. There was two instances that I remember that popped in my mind. This is probably going back about 10 years ago. There was a, a chick that was a bartender I went out with. Really cute girl. And I remember I was real busy that day. And I just, and I was like, I had to push back the time we were supposed to meet. I don't know, it was like a half hour, hour, something like that. And she texted back and said, you know, start telling me something. Oh, my girlfriend's from work. It's having this really difficult time. I really need to be there for her. It's okay if I bring her. And I thought she was cute. And I was like, you know, I was like, I should have just said, no, why don't you guys go ahead and do your own thing and, and uh, we can get together some other time. But I was like, I didn't really care one way or another because I didn't know her that well. We only, you know, talked for, I don't know, five, ten minutes while I was while I was eating and, and she was serving me. I think it was like during lunch or something where I had met her. And uh, I was like, whatever. So she shows up with her girlfriend. We had a few drinks and I didn't really jive with her that well. I actually had more fun chatting with her girlfriend but I never went out with her after that but I mean there was a good chance that if I hadn't texted her and pushed the date back you know a half hour hour whatever it was that she probably wouldn't have even shown up at all that's okay I and I had another instance that, that this totally reminded me of because it was exactly two days I had this restaurant I used to go in and uh, you know I, I met one of the, one of the waitresses that was there I'd, I'd been going in there for I guess it was like a couple months and I'd seen her and she'd never waited on me. She had a nice body, real cute girl. And, uh, you know, she, I went in there one day and she waited on me and we got to chatting and talking. Got, you know, I got her number, asked, you know, asked her when she was available. She's like, well, I'm free tonight. I, I couldn't do that particular night. And she had something going on the week. And I was like, well, I'll get in touch with you next week. And so I texted, I said, hey, I texted you my number and I'll get in touch with you next week. And that's basically, you know, to the effect was, hey, have a great week and I'll, I'll talk to you next week. And when she got off, when her shift ended, she texted me, you know, after and said, hey, you know, great chatting with you too. I look forward to talking to you next week. So the next week came, it was like a Monday or Tuesday, texted her, hey, you want to see what, what your schedule's like this week? And she's like, I'm available Thursday, I think it was like Thursday or Friday, something like that. Made a date with her. And uh, I mean, you know, it was like perfect textbook. I mean, she knew me because she had seen me in there before and I knew some of the other girls that she fucking worked with. And I think it was like, I think it might've been a Friday and I think we were supposed to meet up. And uh, so I, I get to this place and I said, hey, I just walked in, I'm, I'm at the bar or are you almost here? And like three or four minutes later, she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. It was like, I had an emergency. I've been so busy all day. It was so much going on and I just forgot to text you. And, and I was thinking to myself, it's like, and it was like, you know, kind of a long text explaining herself. And I was like, the longer the excuse, the bigger the lie. And, and same thing. I'd, I'd set the date, like I think it was like 48 hours at a time. It was like literally two days. And I wasn't some fucking stranger that I was like, I was going to see her again, probably in the next week or so when I went in there. And, uh, but she fucking blew me off. And, I, you know, I remember I was like, I said something, the effect was, well, you know, she's like, I'm still still down south and, you know, it's going to, and I just said, well, hop in the car and come on over, slacker. She never replied. <laughs> it's like, it happens, you know? So it's, I, should I feel bad? I had a great time that night. I was kind of tired. It had been a long day at work. I remember I had a couple glasses of wine, had a nice meal, shot the shit with some of the other people that were hanging out there and I had a good time. And I spent no money on her, just, just like this guy. I went out, had a good time by myself. Yeah, the girl didn't show up, but you know, I never asked her out or went out with her again. Chattered with her a couple times, busted her balls about it. I was like, I was not I was gonna, not going to give her another chance. I'm going to, you know, if somebody dicks you over like that, I mean, think about it. You have kids with a woman like that? Oh, I forgot to pick up little Johnny at school. So sorry. 
I don't think so. So the way I look at it is it saved me a lot of time and hassle. But, you know, like I said, the, you could push the date back or change the plan. Just say, hey, this restaurant's full. How about, you know, suggest an alternative restaurant. Just if you're worried about the girl ditching you. And one of the things that I used to do a lot of is that, and I still do to this day with online dating, is that you know, I always have them come to me. And I'll typically I will often say, hey, when you're like five minutes away, text me and because I live across the street and I'll just I'll just meet you. And that way if they're gonna stand me up or not show up, they're gonna be late. And it's like it's I don't have to leave or go anywhere or do anything. So it's like let them do all the fucking work. You know, if you invite somebody out, obviously you're gonna pay because it's your show. You know, it's just like if you have a party. And you invite people over, you're not like, hey, give me some cash for the beer or the food or whatever we're having. So it's, you know, you could look at it and say, oh, you got stood up. Or you could say, hey, I weeded out a piece of shit. <laughs> it's all in how you look at things. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. He says, I wasn't upset. And that was the other thing I, I remember as I was sitting there, I was like, I was thinking to myself, what a fucking cunt. But I was like, I didn't like get angry or anything. I was, that was what was surprising me. I was just kind of like, she saved me a lot of time. I don't have to go out on a, several dates with her. I don't have to waste, a, you know, going out three or four dates before I find out she's a total flake. I found out she was a total flake before we even had our first date. That's awesome. I saved myself a lot of time and effort. Again, it's all on how you frame it and how you look at it. He says, I, I wasn't upset I, having never been stood up before. And, I, and there was another one that I thought of. There was This was like going back probably, I want to say it was like 2007, 2008. It was this girl I met on Match. And she was like, oh, just call, you know, we made plans. And she gave me the, you know, call, the verify type shit. And I was like, hey, I, you know, I only got two evenings or I only have like one evening open this week and you know if you can't make definite plans well, we can do it another time and I remember she texted back she's like oh you're one of those and she says okay and she agreed to the day and a time to definitely meet and then I go there where we're supposed to meet and the fucking bitch didn't show up it's like so she made plans with me purposely made me think she was going to be there and then just blew me off. That was just her way to be like, oh, fuck you. It's like, you know, another feral human. I mean, yeah, it was, it was a dick move on her part, but it doesn't reflect on me. It saved me a lot of time and energy. It just shows that she's a piece of shit. So I saved myself from wasting any time or money on a piece of shit, another feral human being, another one of those assholes that drives slow in the left lane. That's all how you look at things. He says, I didn't know I didn't know how it was to go, but I told myself if she didn't reach out with a solid excuse, apologized, and asked for a do-over, that I would only travel the distance from my couch to the front door to let her into my home. The whole I never agreed to come thing was a wild pitch. Yeah, she's a fucking liar and a narcissist. She's a feral human, not worth your time. But I can't make time in my life for that kind of communication kablooey. <laughs> I wound up having a great night regardless and having read your work and watched a lot of your newsletters, I felt the strongest negotiating tool was to walk away and mean it. Absolutely. Because a lot of guys would look at that situation and go, oh, I got stood up. I can't believe it. She was so cool. What could I have done differently? It's like, again, it's like you showed up. You said you were going to be someplace at a certain day, at a certain time. You were planning on, you invite her out, you were going to pay, whether it was for drinks or dinner or whatever the fuck it had, happened to be. You had enough integrity to show up. Well, obviously the person you made the date with didn't match your level of integrity. So you don't take it personally. You know, the fact that other people are fucked up is not your problem. It is absolutely not your fucking problem. The girl did you a favor. That's reality. So don't take it personally if you get stood up. It's not a bad fucking thing. The sooner you can find out that somebody is undesirable, the better off you're going to be. I see it in my phone sessions all the time. I would say probably a good 30 to 40% of the phone sessions that I do 
with men and women are men and women that are involved with people that are really kind of feral human beings or people that are just low quality, but they're looking at what they want. They're looking at the ideal of the person they want. They're projecting what they want, their fantasy of what they want onto the other person. And they're ignoring the fact that they're displaying all kinds of undesirable qualities. And again, it's like what I was talking about in the beginning of the video that it's like, you know, the majority of us think about all the, you know, the kind of shit like this that happens or the phone calls that you have where there's awkward silences or you meet a girl or you get rejected. It's like you have to go through a lot of no's in order to get to the yeses. And even when you get a yes, a yes not, is not exactly a great thing. It's like back when I was in the mortgage business, I mean, we would get out of all the agents, 20 agents that we had working there, we would get thousands of phone calls every month. And out of those thousands of phone calls and the tens of thousands of dollars we used to spend in television advertising, we would get maybe one or two of those deals that we closed were like really big home run deals. We were making 30, 40 grand in the loan and the real estate, the majority of them were 10, 12, $15,000 type of mortgage commissions. And so it's like you get, you know, it's like in direct response sales. When you think about if you're doing like marketing, like you're say you're doing direct mail or you have a television ad. I mean, typically out of a hundred prospects, it's considered to be doing really well if two to 3% of those prospects convert and turn into a paying customer. And you gotta look at it the same way. When it comes to the dating world, the reality is the overwhelming majority of women that you're gonna interact with are just, you're not compatible with them, even if you think they're hot. They're just not. And so you can't get impatient that you haven't found the one or the right person because even when you find the right person, you may date them for a couple of years and decide, hey, this has been great, but I'm moving to a new city, I don't want to settle down, or I want to see what else is out there. Because most people, like I said, if you if you read my book, I mean, like what I went through with my ex-wife, it's like I should have just moved away and broke it off with my girlfriend. But I was young, I didn't fucking know anything, I had everybody talking in my ear telling me I needed to marry her, even though it didn't feel right inside. But I was young and I was inexperienced, I didn't know any better. And so I listened to everybody else, instead of speaking with my own voice. And because of that, I went through an expensive divorce and the embarrassment of that to all my friends and family and her family. And I mean, it just sucked. And the idea is I share these things so you can learn from it and you don't make the same mistakes and you can speed up your success and get to where you want to be quicker. So if you're in a situation and you, whether it's personal or professional and you'd like to get my help, the quickest way is go to my website, click the products tab at the top of your screen and book whatever coaching option works for you. And until then, until next time, I will talk to you soon.